the shortcomings of my early work on successful teachers of African American students is that I had a very limited focus on youth culture, 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 culture. Your principal allows it. 30 years ago, when I was infusing it, they would, never they would not allow it. What I had to do is I had to sneak and, and just do my thing because our son, we could see him engaged. Thank you. you know, and I mean, from Howard University not even wanting me to study hip hop and education wow. hmm. just because they said it was a passing fact because at that time they weren't even allowing it on MTV. Wow. You know, when this you look at works. even some of the artists like. Karis one and I mean but they Absolutely. they let me in. Karis mm. one and, and um, you know and Chuck and Bambada and all all of the old school um that's a sonic. Yes. Um, Daddy O. Daddy O and yeah and it was X Clan, you know yeah. <laughs> you know and all of them yeah. they let me in. This is beautiful. This is like a dream come true. And just it's, seeing this It really is. No, I'm I, meeting you I feel like that's a dream come true. Let me give you education and I was doing hip hop, and those worlds had to collide. And that's what this project is, the culmination of that. We're gonna talk about that. I entered into the education space here in New York City in a very innovative way where my beginnings were as a teaching artist. So I've been able to enter into the space and actually activate a lot of what we talk about and see it work and sometimes see it not work. Learning more about what do young people care about? What are they thinking about? Why are they communicating so brilliantly, <laughs> not just in New York and Chicago and LA, across the world on the same note at the same time every time? And it led us to this project being something to aim more towards adults, the educators themselves. education and I was doing hip-hop and those worlds had to collide and that's what this project is the culmination of that we're gonna talk about that I entered into the education space here in New York City in a very innovative way where my beginnings were as a teaching artist so I've been able to enter into the space and actually activate a lot of what we talk about and see it work and sometimes see it not work learning more about what do young people care about? What are they thinking about? Why are they communicating so brilliantly, <laughs> not just in New York and Chicago and LA, across the world on the same note at the same time every time? And it led us to this project being something to aim more towards adults, the educators themselves. And this is what we had in common. This is how we knew this would work for us. I'd be in the classroom and I'd have kids, you know, no problems with kids. I didn't even write in Columbus, it's called a 190. When a kid gets into trouble, oh, I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna write a 190. <coughs> oh, kids, oh, okay, I'm gonna put you on. All right, so I wasn't writing 190s. And, you know, kids would come in and teachers would be like, that kid is hell on wheels. What are you, you don't have a problem with it? Nah, this is my people, right? So I started to understand that it wasn't, because at first I thought, oh, well, we're both black. Maybe that's you know, got something to do with it. But it wasn't that. It was the culture. We had something in common that was bigger than just skin color. It was just, it was our characteristics. It was our behaviors, our mannerisms. I mean, look how we're, I mean, come on, right? Yes, sir. I do that because I am hip hop. And my students, they identify with hip hop culture. 